Okay, I said there might be some complications with Mr. Flashback, and uh, due to circumstances beyond his control, Mr. Flashback will not be joining us today. I'm not even quite sure if he'll be joining us tomorrow. I know he will be joining us this week, and the review will go off without a hitch whenever time permits. Now, I've been really busy this week, and between going to Raw on Monday night and all the new stuff with Pop and the new job at work, I just have been totally busy, and I have been way behind so much so that I've actually not been able to get to the normal wrestling recaps that I usually do every week for Pop. But fear not, everyone. Fear not, because I just finished Impact a few minutes ago. And after I do this, I'm going to go watch this week's NXT and this week's SmackDown, and I'm going to shoot that video as well. So you're going to get two wrestling recaps, and of course tonight is Celebrity Apprentice. This is the third to last episode of this season, and my prediction, Mary Lou's going home. So, uh, we'll talk about Celebrity Apprentice tomorrow. And there may be more pop content tomorrow, because I'm still waiting on Ben's videos to come. He's uh, putting the finishing touches on them, and soon they will be on this channel. So, you'll be able to see Ben's stuff very soon. And of course, this Friday we've got AJ's movie reviews of The Great Gatsby. Peoples, and uh, I believe there's another film. It's a British movie, and uh, that's another movie that's going to be reviewed. And I don't know if there'll be any more, but you'll be back here in this living room with AJ and myself talking this week's movie reviews. But without any further ado, it is Sunday, and usually it's AJ's Weekend Movie Reviews, and not now, that's now on Friday, so let's talk TNA, because I just got to watch it. They were taped last week in Indiana, Pennsylvania, and basically we start the show off with Hulk Hogan coming out, and the crowd is into him, as they always are. Basically, he said, last week, him and Sting almost came to blows. But the best thing they can do right now is clear things up between the two of them. And just like clockwork, Sting appears. And basically, last week, things didn't really end with a very pretty picture between the two of them. He was wrong, completely wrong about pushing Sting away. Hogan apologizes and said he made a huge mistake. That he needs to rectify right now, and he's going to do just that by shaking Sting's hand. So he extends his hand, and Sting shakes it, and he basically pulls Sting close and says, This is all about loyalty and trust between the two of them, and they need to team up and deal with the problem at hand, and that is the Aces and Eights. Sting says, All is good, and it's water under the bridge. Sting asks Hogan for the permission to get a six man together for next week. And next week, it's going to be Aces and Eights against a team of Sting's choosing. Hogan's all for this idea and tells Sting that it's on him to figure out because he's got to figure out who's going to face Bully Ray at Slammiversary. And just like clockwork, here comes the blueprint Matt Morgan to the ring for the interruption, as always. Morgan assumes Sting is going to be handed a title shot, just like always. But Hogan says the mistake that he just made was interrupting before he had finished. Now Hulk Hogan finishes up and says the title shot's not going to be handed to Sting, or even to Matt Morgan. No, this time around, they're going to have to wrestle for it in the main event tonight on Impact. And then Hogan leaves the ring, leaving Morgan and Sting to contemplate what's going to happen later on tonight to see who's going to face Bully Ray at Slammiversary. So... There's no more heat between Sting and Hogan, so uh, business as usual, and that's not a problem. I mean, they're proving their storyline friendship. And it works really well that they're banding together in a common goal to eliminate Aces and Eights from TNA. And that's exactly what they're supposed to do because they're the head baby faces of the company. And they need to make sure they eradicate Aces and Eights, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. And by joining forces together, and by setting up this six-man tag for next week's Impact, they're doing just that. So we see another video, and this time we see the return of Chris Saban. Saban discusses the, inter the horrible injury from last June, and how heartbreaking he was. 
he's even more motivated and more driven than ever before to make it to the top of Impact Wrestling. He says his goal from here on out is to be the World Heavyweight Champion. And he's up next in action in a three-way dance with Zima Ion and Sanjay Dutt in a X Division title number one contenders match. So, immediately we wonder, is Chris Saban the next Austin Aries? Hmm, it's very possible, even though if you really think about it, they have a lot invested in Austin Aries. They really have, and they're putting this tag team together with Bobby Roode, two tag team championship contenders of two former world heavyweight champions. They're not tag team title contenders, they're a team of former world heavyweight champions. And we saw what happened when Austin Aries shocked the world, defeating Bobby Roode and winning the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Now a lightning strike twice with Chris Saban? It's a very good possibility. Think about it from that perspective. And just for a moment. I mean, Austin Aries, when he started out, he had the Austin Star gimmick. He had that short-lived tag team with Roderick Strong. He was in a tag team. And then he became TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Flash. Back to the beginning of TNA when Chris Saban was a singles competitor. When Alex Shelley debuted and they formed the Motor City Machine Guns in TNA. Their tag team on the Independence and in Ring of Honor. But he was a tag team wrestler. And will he become World Heavyweight Champion? He's already winning house show matches against Bobby Roode and he did over the weekend. So maybe some good things in the future for Chris Saban. We come back from commercial break, and we see Kurt Angle. He's pacing back and forth, ranting about aces and eights to no one in particular. He says tonight he issues a challenge to any member of aces and eights. Angle says you can hurt him and beat him, but you cannot stop him. So Zemion makes his way to the ring. Christy Hemi's in the ring, as beautiful as ever, introducing Sanjay Dutt. And then Sanjay gets in the ring, and here comes Chris Saban. And it's the first time we've seen Saban in forever. <clears throat> it's been awesome. And Saban's even back in the ring after having two ACLs and being able to say that he basically was on the shelf for almost two years. But now he's back and better than ever, and he does so in this matchup. So, we get a short match here, and it's not bad. Midway of the match, we find out that there has been a challenger selected via Impact Wrestling's website. And Suicide will make his return to Impact, and he will be involved in a number one contender's three-way dance somewhere down the line. I don't know if that's going to end up being this coming week, or if it's going to be down the road, but it's going to happen. You'll see Suicide return. I don't know if that means it's going to be Kaz or Daniels under the mask, or even someone completely new, but it's going to be pretty awesome to see him back. So, basically we get midway through the match, and after this announcement's made, pretty much Sanjay ends up hitting the uh, standing shooting star press after a really awesome uh, Tilda World DDT, Tilda World Satellite DDT in this case. So, Shima breaks up the count. And Ion drops Dutt with a DDT, and he kicks out. Dot blocks the roll. Dutt blocks the roll up and takes Zima out with a nice super kick. Saban takes Zima out himself. Hits a Spicoli driver on Sanjay on top of Shima Zion. So Saban ties Dutt up in the tree of woe. Launches Ion into their foe. Saban gets a running start. It is a nice running kick. And he hits a cross special brain buster for the one, two, three. Yeah, B Boy's old cross special brain buster is what he uses to put away Zima Ion. So Zima is now once again out of contendership for the X Division Championship. And we're going to see Chris Saban and Sanjay Dutt battle the X Division Champion Kenny King, I would say, this coming week on Impact, if I had to guess. Who knows? <coughs> so. Sorry, the sinus is again. One thought comes to mind. Now, back when there was a Destination X pay-per-view, which there no longer is, Hulk Hogan basically said that if you were a champion at said pay-per-view, you could cash in your championship for a shot at the World Heavyweight Championship. Hmm. Maybe Saban really is Austin Aries. 
I guess we're going to find out sooner rather than later. So we go backstage and we see Jesse and Robbie E. talking back and forth about their match, a handicap match against Rob Terry. And Jesse brings up Joey Ryan to be their partner. So it's going to be a three-on-one match against Rob Terry. Basically saying sleazy means easy, even though Robbie E. pretty much admonishes... Wow, long day. Admonishes Jesse on his poor rhyming skills, sleazy and easy, as we go to commercial. Yeah. We come back, and it is our handicap match, Rob Terry against Robbie E., Joey Ryan, and Jesse Goddard. So, we get way, midway through the match, and Jesse Goddard's, uh attacks Rob Terry, and Joey Ryan joins in. Actually, all three of them are jumping in at the same time. Terry shakes them off, sends them flying, grabs Ryan and Goddard's, and nails a double backdrop suplex, which looks really awesome, by the way. It shows off, showcases off his uh, his strength and power. And then he picks up Jerry Ryan and hits the Beast Bomb. It's a nice little wink-wink uh, to the people that are calling Rob Terry Batista. Which basically uh, is his new his finish that he's been using for a while now. And uh, one, two, three. So Nice little squash. Was fine. Unlike the WWE handicap matches with Sheamus and Randy Orton against the Big Show, this one actually makes sense. You have three people trying to take out a common goal. And this common goal being someone that is much larger than all three of them. So, I don't know what they're going to do with Rob Terry at this point. I guess we'll see what happens... I'm going to guess this is going to continue, but I don't really know what you can do with it. You can't really push Rob Terry. He's mid-card for life, so eh, who knows. I'm not a big Rob Terry fan and never have been. So Austin Aries and Bobby Roode are headed to the ring next to address the TNA audience. When we come back from commercial break, they do just that. So basically Mike Tanay is on commentary, as always, and he hypes up the number one contenders matchup with Bad Influence next week on Impact. And Bobby gets on the mic first, and he admits that Kaz and Daniels got into his head a little bit last week about their desire to reform Fortune. Bobby said it wasn't about reforming Fortune as much as their jealousy over his partnership with Austin Aries, as evidenced by how they cost him the belts last week, the match against Chavo and Hernandez when they won the tag team titles back. So Aries is up next on the mic, and he says, while Bad Influence are best friends, he and Bobby like each other just about enough to have a common goal, and that goal is to be the tag team champions, being a team of world champions. So Aries says him and Rude are about winning matches and not comedy because they are former world tag team, they're former world heavyweight champions. So here comes Bad Influence to interrupt, as they do. Daniels goes on the mic and says, Aries and Rude aren't the next tag team champions, nor are they even the best tag team standing in the ring right now. Daniels says, everyone knows Aries and Rude are a pale imitation of bad influence. That's funny, because I'm sure every smart fan in the world were probably calling Daniel, and every smart TNA hating fan in the world that knows of TNA were basically saying right there that TNA just admitted to the fact that Aries and Rude are hell no light. I would not call them that because they're far better, even though Daniel Bryan is better. is pretty much equal, if not better. No, actually, again. Daniel Bryan himself is equal to Aries and Rude. So that really has no uh, validity whatsoever. But uh, TNA haters, probably quick to jump on that. Even Aries is a, uh, a vegan, too. So there's always that. Anyway... Daniel says the next tag team champions are standing right in the ring right now, and spoiler alert, it's them. So Bobby gets really flustered and says they will do whatever it takes to be champions again, even mentioning the fact that he broke the beer bottle over his best friend's head to win the World Heavyweight Championship. So Kaz says Aries and Rude can't outbeat them or outcheat them. He calls them bad influence light. So here comes Chavo and Hernandez wearing the tag team t well, Chavo wearing the tag team titles and Hernandez carrying it like it, he's a common animal. Now, basically, around his neck, like, dangling from his chain. So, basically, they interrupt, and Chavo says the time for talk is over, and now it's time for action. Chavo says they just talked to Hulk Hogan, and there's going to be a special guest referee in the tag team title number one, number one contendership match next week. Who is it going to be? Cowboy James Storm. 
So James Storm comes out with beers, he toasts the tag team champions, and they stare bad influence and are and rude down. So that ends that segment. So Sting catches up with Kurt Angle in the workout room. Sting is a- asks, are you ready for tonight? Angle, of course, says yes. Sting shuts the door says, I got some business to talk to you. And, uh, of course, we don't find out what's going on, so they have a little private conversation. Come back to commercial and Taryn Terrell is the topic of conversation from Tara and Gail Kim. And Tara is very upset about Tara getting the victory last week and is letting her partner, Gail Kim, hear all about it. It's basically reading her the riot act. Gail calls her down and says, tonight they need to embarrass Tara and Mickey James. Tara says, I'll see you out there and exits. Gail Kim's final response, I'm going to be the one to get this victory. So Saban cuts the promo about the match and the fans and about being a professional wrestler, you know, things like that old chestnut you've heard before. So D'Lo makes his way to the ring and basically what's not really mentioned, what I, I forgot to mention, sorry about this, was basically Aces and Eights were having a promo in the back and they were saying that they have to take out Kurt Angle. Bully says, we have to take out Kurt Angle. We have to take him out now. So Garrett and Wes, they decide, okay, fine. Nah, Wes like, I beat him three times before I can beat him again. And Garrett's like, I took him out last time. Let me eat a piece of him. Out of this, D'Lo Brown pushes them both aside, says, kids, I'll take care of this myself. I'm going to be the one that's going to take out Kurt Angle. And you know what? I'm going to bet my colors against it. That's right. He's betting his cut against the fact he's going to beat Kurt Angle tonight. Not a smart and we find this out. So D'Lo comes out to the ring, and I'll tell you right now, I called this match a long time ago, and if you watch these recaps, I'm sure you have, if you're watching this one, that, yeah, I've called this a long time ago. It was going to happen. It was writing on the wall this was going to happen, D'Lo and Kurt Angle. I thought they might wait for a pay-per-view, but since we don't have that many pay-per-views, we have to blow it off on Impact, so that's exactly what they did. D'Lo comes to the ring, and then comes Kurt Angle, and they're both staring each other down in the middle of the ring. So we come back from commercial break, and the crowd, of course, is chanting USA, as usual. D'Lo gets on the mic and says, it's not good enough just to beat you. I gotta humiliate you. And the way to humiliate you the best is to do something that no other man has done before. Make you say, I quit. So we are getting an I quit match for our next contest here on Impact. So, basically, they go back and forth. Not a bad match, really, considering the fact that uh, D'Lo's been on the shelf for quite a while and has really not done any indie dates, even though the times that he was uh, the masked Aces and Eights guy on the house shows and did the base brawl matches, too. But uh, Angle nails five rolling German suplexes in a row, and the ref, of course, asks him if he wants to quit. D'Lo tells the ref, kiss my ass, and then nails a sixth German suplex with the release. Angle drops the straps, goes for the ankle lock, D'Lo refuses to quit, and of course by this time Aces and Eights are out, basically I see Doc, I see Mr. Anderson is holding them back, he's like, no, 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 we'll let D'Lo take care of this, he's the vice president after all, so he locks the ankle lock, D'Lo refuses to quit, he kicks Angle off, Brown follows up with a nice Samoan drop, and a double down, D'Lo goes for the Thunderfire powerbomb, you know, the one that accidentally paralyzed draws. No offense to D'Lo, but I'm just stating a fact. And Angle rolls through with a sunset flip, rolls back, locks on the ankle lock, and D'Lo tries to roll through again. Angle keeps the grasp up, and he still has it locked on. Great binds the leg. He's tapping out, but of course the referee's like, no, that's not going to happen. So Baby Abner's like, no, I'm not going to allow this. That tap out is not I quit. So D'Lo yells I quit, and the match is over. Eight match, eight minutes in, and it uh, wasn't bad. Uh, decent match for the two, and uh, considering the fact that D'Lo has a lot of ring rust, he's still fluid in the ring. I mean, he's still, he's still good. He was still quick in the ring. And the fact this is not the D'Lo Brown that was the European champion. This is not the D'Lo Brown that was a member of the Nation of Domination. This is a completely different... This is not even the D'Lo Brown from Smoky Mountain. This is a completely different D'Lo Brown, and uh, I don't mind it. And if D'Lo ends up wrestling more often, I don't have a problem with that. But I think his days in the Aces and Eights might be numbered because he did put his colors on the line against Kurt Angle, and he lost. So, uh, Bully is a little bit peeved right now. And is, I completely understand why. So Kurt Angle celebrates the win. 
and Aces and Eights uh, walk away. So Chrissy interviews Angle on the apron, on the ramp. Angle brushes off his victory, and he calls out AJ Styles. Will AJ make his way out? We'll find out next after the commercial break. So we come back from commercial break. And you have to wonder, is Mr. Anderson trying to uh, leverage for D'Lo's uh, vice president job in Aces and Eights? I think so. And I think that Mr. Anderson is going to take that spot sooner rather than later. I think that uh, D'Lo is going to have to earn his cut back, if you know what I mean. So uh, he'll probably have some uh, dirty work to do with Aces and Eights before he can uh, be welcomed back into the group again. I mean, he's obviously going to be with the group, or he might be without the group. Bully might kick him out. I'm not exactly sure. But I'm sure we're going to find out a little bit more next week on Impact. So, <coughs> excuse me. Basically, Kurt Angle gets in the ring, like he did right before the commercial break. When we come back from break, he's still calling AJ out. So AJ comes out. He gets in the ring and stares Angle down. Angle says Styles doesn't look the same as he used to. And basically, he's not going to get very far if he chooses to be with the Aces and Eights. Because he's in his home, western Pennsylvania which, of course, pops the crowd. And, basically, you're taking the easy way out if you join Aces and Eights. But, and I've done this before. I understand. I know what the easy way out is. I've done it numerous times. But don't do that this time. You're the reason I came to TNA in the first place. I can respect the stuff you're going through, but you need to, we need to know where you stand in this war. Are you with us? Are you against us? If you're with us, it's cool. It's awesome. And... We're not going to have any problems. But if you're not, then you're marked man. Angle basically tells AJ he needs to make his decision next week. So, basically, TNA is pretty much saying that, AJ, if you don't join us in the fight against Aces and Eights, we're going to destroy you. It's not really what Aces and Eights are saying. They're just trying to welcome AJ into the group. So, who's AJ better suited for at this point? Obviously, the phenomenal AJ Styles, clean shaven, is the savior of TNA. But, they're not going that direction right now. And I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, they might have him. He could be, I guess you could say, if you want to talk about comparisons... I would compare it to DDP and the NWO, how DDP basically got brought in and he was the one that turned them down after they brought him in, and he pretty much broke him apart from the outside and the inside instead of the outside, so uh, maybe AJ will get in the aces and eights and tear them apart from within. That could happen. There's a lot of egos in that group. So, of course, we see Matt Morgan backstage. He's angry, and his beard is angrier. Morgan has been waiting ever since Hulk Hogan entered TNA for him to do the right thing and stop making those Hogan mistakes he keeps referring to every single week on Impact. He's no longer waiting for the ball. He's going to take it, and he's going to gut through Sting tonight. Then he's going to gut through Bully Ray at Slammiversary and take the World Heavyweight Championship. And he basically says he is the next World Heavyweight Champion. Then he storms off like a job. So Gail Kim makes her way to the ring. And, of course, we see what happened last week where, well, two a couple weeks ago, where Taryn actually got her first in-ring match being a win over Gail Kim. So Tara makes her way out second, and we see how she lost to Taryn Terrell last week on Impact. ODB, of course, is your knockouts referee, as always. And after commercial break, we come back, and Mickey James comes out. So it's going to be... A knockouts tag match, Mickey James and Taryn Terrell against Gail Kim and Tara. So that's going to be the match we get next. So basically, midway through the match, Taryn gets the hot tag and Tara tags in. Taryn hits numerous clotheslines, a nice back elbow, and a snap suplex. She goes up top for the flying body press, but Gail Kim makes the save. Mickey and Gail knock each other out of the ring, and Taryn rolls Tara up for the 1-2-3. So, six and a half minutes. And, not bad. And I'm telling you, the knockouts division, 
wipes the floor with the Divas division. And we're talking the group that has Sarah Del Rey as the trainer for NXT. So there's some great women's talent in WWE, don't get me wrong, but they don't utilize them at all. Natty. And basically, they're just underutilizing everyone. Natty. But did I mention Italian Nightheart needs to be utilized as something more than just a member of the Oddities 2K13? Uh, get her out of that group, please. But I'll complain about that probably on Raw next week when we do that recap uh, Tuesday night. So, good match. And I like this. I like this a lot. And I think Taryn Terrell is coming a long way in a very short amount of time. No indication this week about Mickey James turning heel. I think it's going to happen, and I think that's going to be the feud we're going to get. We're going to get Mickey as the heel and Velvet as the face. Ms. Velvet right now is the face of the Knockouts division. She is the Knockouts champion. And I think that match is going to happen sooner rather than later. So that's what we have to look forward to. So uh, it works fine. After the match is over, they have a nice brawl. And when we get back in the ring, we see Gail Kim nail eat defeat on Taryn Terrell, leaving her laying and then slamming her head in the canvas numerous times. And she locks in a ring post figure four on Taryn Terrell. And that was awesome to actually see that utilized in a ring again. And I haven't seen him forever. So uh, what's this with Canadians using ring post figure four? That's just a, quite a quandary to uh, think about. Hmm. So Gil Kim is still look strong. Taryn Terrell is definitely still an up and comer. Who has a reason to be there and not just the fact that she was a referee at one point. And... Everything's working really well. I love the Knockouts division. I really do. I mean, the storylines are phenomenal, and Juliet Danielle actually has something to enjoy on uh, Thursday nights. Come back from commercial break. Aces and Eights are in a state of disarray and a state of uh, confusion after what happened earlier tonight with uh, the tap out. Basically, well, he tapped out and he said, I quit, did D'Lo Brown. And Bully just keeps talking about he put his colors on the line. He keeps asking Mr. Anderson if he really did say I quit, if he's just imagining things. I'll deal with him next week. But it's more important, and I know we'll get the job done with his six man because it's going to be me, it's going to be Mr. Anderson, and it's going to be Devon. So Team 3D and Mr. Anderson against Sting, Kurt Angle, and a partner to be announced. Supposedly AJ Styles. We'll find out sooner rather than later. So, we see, basically, Aries and Rude backstage. They said they're going to walk into Elvis country. That's right, Tupelo, Mississippi next week. The place of the infamous WCW Uncensored pay-per-view. I'm sure a lot of people in the company, including a lot of people in TNA right now, would love to forget. Uncensored, of course, was a very infamous pay-per-view, and if you've not seen it, it was 1995, and there were a lot of really messed up matches, like Sting against the late Ray Trailer, and oh my god, it was absolutely ugh, bad, bad pay-per-view. If you really want to track it down, you can. So, uh, or tape fist match, martial, martial arts match, I mean, there was the uh, King of the Road match, between Barry Darso as the Blacktop Bully and Dustin Rhodes that really spilled a lot of blood, but it was all edited out for content because back in the day, WCW didn't really have that much blood. But that's going to be the place, not the same building, but that's going to be the same place that's going to house Impact next Thursday night. So, next Thursday night we're going to see the Big Six Man, 3D and... Mr. Anderson taking on Sting, Kurt Angle, and a mystery partner, presumably AJ Styles. The number one contendership for the TNA World Tag Team titles will be on the line as Austin Aries and Bobby Roode take on Bad Influence, the Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels, and Frankie Kazarian, and much, much more. So it's going to be an awesome, and who knows, are we going to get our matchup with Chris Saban, Sanjay Dutt, and the X Division champion Kenny King? Are we going to get that? Are we going to get any knockouts matches? I mean, Impact's heating up again, as usual. So, uh, haters beware. TNA's getting better. We get our main event, which is our number one contenders match, to see who's going to face Bully Ray at Slammiversary. Sting against the blueprint Matt Morgan. So, basically, Morgan hits the carbon footprint out of the Stinger splash attempt, and Sting kicks out. 
So he goes for another carbon footprint, and he nails the turnbuckle, seemingly tweaking his knee. So Sting kicks the leg out and applies a scorpion death lock. Morgan struggling to get out, even biting his hand to deal with the pain, crawling towards the ropes, and he finally breaks the hold. So Sting drags him back in the center of the ring, reapplies the scorpion death lock. Morgan tries to fight out, but he passed out because of the pain, and Sting wins in 13 minutes. We've been building this since October between Sting and Bully Ray, and it's finally coming to fruition at Slammiversary. And I have no problem with that. It makes the most sense. It has the most history behind it. So, Sting winning eh, doesn't bother me at all. And uh, Morgan will live to fight another day. That's fine. He looks strong. He didn't tap out. He didn't get pinned. He lost because he passed out via the pain. So, he doesn't look bad at all in losing. And that's a good thing. So... Not a bad show. Really good. Very enjoyable. And uh, Aces and Eights mean something again. And we actually have a reason to care. And I've been digging Impact. And I know a lot of people don't. But, I mean, this was a good in- good edition of Impact. And I like the fact that Aces and Eights are now uh, kind of infighting. And we're going to wonder what's going to happen with D'Lo. And we'll see that next week on Impact. So, like I said, we'll be live in Elvis Country next week. Tupelo, Mississippi. The home of my favorite chicken from the Hard Rock Cafe. And we will be doing more Impact. And, of course, they'll tape the next week right after. So, Impact will no longer be live, supposedly. They're going to tape, like, at 7 o'clock. And about 8.40, they'll start taping the second taping and probably end about 10.15. So if you go to Impact, your tickets will probably be like 6.30 if I had to guess. I don't know because I don't have any friends that like TNA. So, well, no friends that would go to the shows with me but or live around here. But uh, if I did, I would definitely go because they're going to be in Cleveland soon. I'd love to go to that for Impact, but... I don't have any friends that will go to TNA, so uh, the only chance I have to ever see Impact ever again would be if they return to Universal somewhere down the road. But with uh, what WWE is uh, supposedly doing with the uh, Brick and Mortar Hall of Fame in Orlando at City Walk, supposedly, and moving a developmental center to Orlando, I think that TNA may want to uh, stay away from Orlando for a while. I mean, if they go to Tampa, maybe run a Bush Gardens, I don't know, but who knows? So, that was an interesting edition of Impact. I'm going to watch NXT from this past week, and then I'm going to watch SmackDown, and I'll rejoin you guys later tonight for a review of both shows. And then tonight, Celebrity Apprentice, like I said, Mary Lou's going home. With that being said, thank you for watching, and uh, once again, if you like these videos, do subscribe, thumbs them up, tell every one of your friends about the Popcaster Rever... Tell one of your friends... Every single one of your friends about the Popcaster Revolution. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, you're more than welcome to, at Soro and Disney. And until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all I got to say about that.